everybody. It's um, Greg here after a long day of uh, filming and rehearsing um, in our new format. We're in the we're in the uh, sanctuary right now, and uh, we have been getting at it with all of our personnel, technical, filming, audio, um, our musicians, and um, I've been filming. But I wanted to take some time. Uh, while Betsy, our new assistant, was here to film, and while things have just settled down now, it's just us in the sanctuary, and we're reflecting on our um, day of rehearsing. We had our hymn and chorus sing. Uh, we've already heard Mark's message for Sunday, and and you are in for a treat, as as always. But the the word of the Lord in this situation right now for us is so strong from Romans last week from Romans 1 through 11 and this week from 12 through 17 um, no longer slaves children of the most high God with an inheritance greater than we could ever imagine bought with the precious purchased by the blood bought with the precious blood of Christ um, and we're free and chosen and can live that way as righteous sons and daughters of the Most High God. Last time I shared with you, I shared from A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. And it's a book that has gotten me through more than one dark nights of the soul. And I consider this one, definitely. And I'm rereading it. I would highly recommend it. I'm also reading um, Valley of Vision. Uh, a book of Puritan prayers and things from our worship service this Sunday and things from this come from both of those books. They're really speaking to me right now. So I wrote a few things down that I want to share with you. God the Father, as I said last week, is the author, the originator of all that exists. He is God the Father and God the Son is an artisan an artist, the creator of all that exists. He has brought into being all that has been originally formulated in his father's mind. So when we say that the Lord is my shepherd, it implies a profound ownership between a human and his maker, his creator. Last week I used an example of a lump of clay that's formed slowly and steadily and lovingly by the um, artist by its creator. I also spoke of a crucible that is so that is fired so hot that it is it turns a certain shade and the um, person, the refiner knows it's ready. But if it's too hot, it destroys the crucible. But just at the moment of the most heat um, the creator knows his product. The creator knows intimately what he's creating. I find that comforting during this time, that God has this. One of the things that this brings to mind is working in my yard. So many of you, especially if you're in the music ministry, know that I fancy myself an amateur landscaper. Emphasis on amateur. But I have redone five yards now. That means we've had five different homes and I've redone uh, new yards, old yards, and now this is the first western yard that I've ever had to do. So I've gotten lots of advice from lots of good gardeners in the choir and in the music ministry. And I'm looking forward to, after a couple of passes on the grass, there is green to be seen, and I have hope um, in western yard living. Um, but as I'm digging in the dirt of my new house, I'm reminded that there, just with one handful of dirt, there's billions and billions of microorganisms, all created by God. They all have a unique system of order that God has designed that nourish the soul. There are also, there's also one other thing in Colorado that's my favorite thing, it's the western sky. Whether it's night and the stars are billions and billions of clear stars. 
especially if the moonlight is shining on the mountain, or if it's daytime and the skies are crystal blue, and you can just feel the crispness in the air. I've always loved the West, and always wondered what it'd be like to live in the West. And now I know, and I love the sky as much as I ever did when I visited out here. But the billions and billions and billions of stars are like the billions and billions of microorganisms in that handful of dirt. And even like the closest star, Alpha Centauri, uh, I think Earth is maybe not even visible from that star, even with the most powerful uh, telescope. And all of this humbles us. All of this gives us an idea of Christ, the Son of God, bringing all things into being from the most gigantic galaxy to the most minuscule microbe. And everything functions flawlessly in accordance with definite laws of order and unity. It's not only humbling, but it's also comforting. And it's a blessing. Number one, we can freely admit the Lord is my shepherd. And we can freely admit to his ownership of us. Simply because he brought us into being. And there's no one better to understand or care for us. He deliberately chose us. He deliberately created us as objects of his affection. Who better for us to just rest in our care? Our worship reflects this in prayers and praises back to him, proclamations about him, and affirmations of his glory, his peace, and his presence. Secondly, he's not only created us, but he's bought us with a dear price, the very life of his son, Christ Jesus, our Lord, and has been, we've been purchased by the blood of Christ, a dear, dear cost, a dear price to pay. For those who we already has created. And third, the aspect in which we are to recognize his ownership of us is that he continually lays himself out for us. He continually intercedes for us. He is ever interceding and ever guiding us by his gracious, peaceful Holy Spirit who brings about comfort and allows us to have a sense of rest in the shepherd. Sheep cannot rest unless they feel safe. Sheep cannot rest unless they feel comfort. Sheep cannot rest unless they, their bellies are full and that they have grazed on nourishing green grass and that they sense the presence of the shepherd and safety. We'll talk a little bit more about that in another devotional, but it's really spoken to me uh, as I have sought to rest in the sovereignty of Christ through this difficult time. It's no accident that we're called sheep. Sheep um, are stubborn, they're fearful, they're timid. They have a mass mindset, a mob instinct. And uh, they are some of the most expensive animals to purchase. And they're the most high maintenance, some of the most high maintenance animals that one can purchase and shepherd. So it's um, no accident that we're called sheep in the scriptures. And we need a, a, a shepherd. We need a savior. We need grace. We need hope. We need uh, the comfort of uh, now I lay in green grasses. So the comfort is this. We're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. He calls us by name. He's adopted us as sons and daughters. He chooses us and he delights in caring for us. The God of the universe has this situation in which we currently find ourselves. We are in his sovereign hand. We are reminded that we belong to him. And with that comes peace, contentment, and rest. He's got this. He's got us. A um, poem that is uh, a prayer in the Valley of Vision that I'm going to read Sunday. I'll share it with you now. Uh, as a preview because it's spoken so much to me um, this week. Lord, high and holy, meek and lowly, thou hast brought me to the valley of vision, where I live in depths, but see thee in the heights. Hemmed in by mountains of sin, I behold thy glory. Let me learn by paradox that the way down is the way up, that to be low is to be high, that the broken heart is the healed heart, that the contrite spirit is the rejoicing spirit, 
that the repenting soul is the victorious soul, that to have nothing is to possess all, that to bear the cross is to wear the crown, that to give is to receive, that the valley is the place of vision. Lord, in the daytime, stars can be seen from deepest wells, and the deeper the wells, the brighter the stars shine. Let me find thy light in my darkness, thy life in my death, thy joy in my sorrow, thy grace in my sin, thy riches in my poverty, thy glory in my valley. Take care, and I hope to see you soon. We'll pray for one another, we'll lift one another up, we'll stay the course by God's grace, clothed in the righteousness of Christ, no longer slaves, reminded that we are adopted, chosen sons and daughters with an inheritance greater than we could ever imagine. This time was originally designed just to go to the music ministry. I love you. I miss you. I miss Wednesdays. I miss Tuesdays. I miss Sundays. I miss our instrumentalists. I miss our vocalists, our technical crew. And I look forward, I long to the day that we are all together. But we all long for the day that we're across Canaan's shore, across the River Jordan, that there, our bodies are glorified. There's no more coronavirus. There's no more illness. And we are worshiping around the throne forever and ever. For now, I'll say goodbye. Can you tell that I really don't want to leave? I am ready to see you. Love you.